fish. Good one. Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to do a bit of a technical subject. And it deals with uh, the impacts of the way our fly lines are constructed on how well we can cast for distance, particularly the running lines. Now, I'm going to focus on overhead lines here. I'm not going to get into spay casting, but a lot of the same issues apply. And I've got two examples in footage that I'm going to put up. The basic problem is when we shoot for distance, when we're over, um, overhead double hauling, and we're trying to get as much distance as we possibly can, the nature of the running line and the amount of running line we're trying to shoot has a huge impact on how far we can go. This is the reason why distance aligns have these long front tapers and long bellies because they're designed to aerialize a lot of line and not shoot a lot of running line. So if you're carrying 50 foot out of the, uh, out of the guides and you're trying to shoot 80 foot of line in total, then all you have to do is shoot 30 feet of running line. And that's not terribly difficult. So when you're working with a line with only a 30 foot head, and you want to cast 80 feet, you're dealing with 50 foot of running line. So the 50 foot head deals with 30 foot of running line and the 30 foot head deals with 50 foot of running line. And trying to shoot a lot of running line becomes a problem. The reason is there is drag, there is resistance in that running line. The heavier the running line, the more inertia it has. It's sitting there, whether it's in your stripping basket, on the deck of the boat, in the water, on grass, wherever it is, it's just sitting there. It has inertia. And the flight of the head of your line has to overcome that inertia. It's sucking energy out of your line as it tries to lift the running line off of whatever surface it's on. Now, it gets worse when you think of the surface. I mean, the worst situation is your running line sitting in the water. The water is viscous. It has a grip on that running line. So a fat running line has trouble getting out of the water because the water has a lot of grip on it. And then you've got, you know, the resistance uh, of the guides. Uh, the line has to shoot through the guides. And then you've got the air aerodynamic drag of the line. The more surface area the running line has, the fatter it is, the more surface area it has, the more aerodynamic drag it has. So you have all these things working against you when you try to shoot a line, which is, again, the reason why distance lines have long heads, so you don't have to shoot as much running line, but it means you have to aerialize a lot of line. So there's more to it than that, though. I mean, you also get into the construction of the running line itself. Whether it's skinny and light or whether it's thick and heavy, those have impacts. So I've got two clips here that I'm going to put up. The first clip is a floating uh, line with a thick running line. And you see that I have to false cast it to empty my stripping basket uh, and leave just a little bit in there so I can shoot the rest. So I'm slipping line on the back cast and the forward cast. I'm aerializing probably 50 foot of line easily, maybe more, uh, in order to get a good cast. The second clip, I've got uh, an intermediate line with an intermediate running line, which is quite thin and light. And you'll notice I just roll the line up, make one back cast, boom, the whole thing is gone because there's not a lot of resistance in that running line. They're both coming out of stripping baskets. I was striped bass fishing. Both coming out of stripping baskets, same basket. So the resistance aspect of it, the inertial aspect of it is basically the same. You're, you're dealing with the same issues, but the lighter running line has less inertia, less drag, less friction. It goes an awful lot better. So if you were trying to shoot a lot of running line and you're using that floater, you're going to be into some false casting. But you're not into false casting with the intermediate line. And so those are the differences. So let's take a look. OK, here I am in Pleasant Bay, and I'm fishing an airflow sniper line. Uh, it's a floating line, and uh, I've got a gurgler on. And uh, I'm just stripping line back into the stripping basket. And I have to work the line quite close to me because fish can hit quite close. Uh, you can't uh, pick up the full head of the line. So as you can see here, where I've frozen the frame, the back end of the head is in my hand. So I have to work that out first. So I make a roll cast, then up, and then I'm doing multiple cast, shooting the line into forward cast and back cast before letting it go. Here I am in 
uh, Pamet River, and I just make a roll cast to extract the line. One back cast, slip a bit of line, forward cast, gone. Uh, that's a difference in the type of running line. Okay, you can see the impact that running line has on our ability to shoot. So what it means for you and I is when we're out in the water, you have to be aware of the resistance in your running line and the inertia in your running line and cast accordingly. So if you want to shoot a lot of line and you're dealing with a thick running line, you're going to have to do some false casting. You're going to have to slip line in your back cast, slip line on your forward cast, aerialize a lot of line and then go and it'll pull out the rest, no problem. If you've got a very slick running line, very skinny, very light one, you don't have to do that as much. So often when you're being uh, held back, when you're trying to get extra distance, sometimes it's the nature of the line you're using in of itself. It, it, just the way it's put together, you know, it might give you easy distance up to 70 or 80 feet, but when you try to get beyond that, now it's starting to work against you. So it was optimized for that mid, mid to long range but it, w it doesn't get, allow you to get much beyond that. It may be great for the wind, it may be great for big flies, uh, it may be great for powering out a cast, but once you get beyond a certain level, it starts to get tough, to get extra distance. And that's where the ability to aerialize a lot of line comes in, that you're able to get that line out of the guides get rid of that inertia, I shouldn't say get rid of it, you don't really get rid of it, but minimize the, the inertia problem and actually use that running line to help you load the rod and send it on its way. So it requires casting adjustments depending on the nature of your line. And don't automatically assume that skinny running line is automatically better than thick running line because thick running line has its own advantages, especially in handling and resistance to tangling. So, uh, you know, you, you, they're trade-offs. You get something, you lose something. That's always the true in, in fly fishing. So keep that aware, uh, awareness in your mind that if you're struggling for distance, it may be very well that you're just trying to shoot too much running line for the type of line that you're using. So keep that in mind. Cheers.